Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It is T90 Official, and welcome to the Most Annoying Strategy, Episode 4. About a year and a half ago, I uploaded the first episode of that series, and I've been struggling to find games that matched up to the quality ever since. I've had lots of people asking me on YouTube, and on Twitch, and on Twitter, and on Facebook, Hey T90, where is the Most Annoying Strategy ever? Where is it? We want more. Well, the fact of the matter is, the first few episodes of this series were just so annoying that I couldn't find any games that matched up to it, and that's that's quite impressive because there's so many games nowadays to cast. Well, guys, I found one, and let's get right to it. We have Spring in the blue. He's playing as the Berbers in this game. And then in the northwest of the map, we have Timotheus in the yellow. He is playing as the Mayans. So this is these are two of the best American players. I know it says Timotheus is from Ireland. I believe he lives in Ireland now, but he uh, does play in the USA Cup. He has dual citizenship. These are also two of the strongest civs in the game right now, I think. Mayans have always been strong. Uh, all Mezu civs now, Incas, Aztecs, Mayans are very strong in the current meta, as are Berbers. So let, let's talk a little bit about their options. Uh, Spring's actually running forward to try and lame here, which is interesting. Now this is just a rated game, so... I, at least, I believe it was a rated game. So, normally you won't see players go out on lame too often. But Spring and Timotheus played a few games on this day. Maybe Timotheus stole a board earlier. But the one big thing that stands out to me about the Berber civilization is that they have the cheaper knights and camels. And if Spring can get a strong eco rolling, he can really make a lot of knights. And he can flood the Mayan player then and also use his mobility. But Timotheus, he has quite a few options here. He could go the, the archer route. He could go the plumed archer route. He could go for halberdiers. He could go for eagles if Spring chooses to go into any type of archers. So Mayans probably have a few more strong options. It's just a matter of getting to them. And we will see how the game plays out. Spring is stealing two sheep from Timotheus. So I'd say pretty strong start for him. You're bringing in all of his resources, no problem. Yeah, I don't think he'll be complaining too much. You know what? His sheep are way out here. Maybe he feels like Timotheus stole sheep from him and he's just stealing them back. But uh, Timotheus is running forward. He might find the sheep. He's, he's coming forward to try and lame Spring back, I suppose. Does not know that his sheep are here. And he'll run by them. He might get them back. But that, believe it or not, is not going to be the main focus here. You can see Spring even... Standing out here next to this boar, he's really delayed Timotheus, honestly, with his Dark Age build. Because this is the first boar for Timotheus. The second one, he still hasn't taken. Spring has taken both. And Spring has taken those sheep, so... Spring, in theory, should have a faster feudal age time. Then the decision will be, uh, is it man-at-arms? Is it scouts? If it's scouts, you gotta wall up a lot. Because you need time to mass them. And Spring doesn't really have the best map. There's some elevation on the right. He have his, his, has his main gold here. He obviously hasn't scouted that area. But if you look on the mini-map now, you see some yellow coming forward. And this is Timotheus. Now, Timotheus knows that Spring is here and Spring is looking to lame him. I'm pretty sure that's why he delayed this. In fact, Spring, it, with a really nice lame here, you have to block the villager. He's done a great job. And that's going to be a dead vill. That is going to be a dead vill. So Spring has not... Oh my god! Oh my god! Spring has not only stolen sheep. He's killed a vill and he could steal the boar. Uh, this is going to be quite a long journey for him. But look at his base! Look at his base! This is Spring's point of view. He has no clue. His opponent has sent forward villagers. And he's walling Spring in. Now we'll see if Spring can bring this back. Boars do more damage to scouts than they used to. So if Spring's not careful, especially if the boar gets a downhill hit, he could lose his scout and he could lose out on all the scouting information he needs to know about this. As you can see, Spring is completely blind to this. And this is just a wonderful episode of this series because you guys probably thought that Spring was going to be the highlight because of the lames. But that is not the case and Spring's... Yeah, Spring will not bring the boar back. And he's still hovering around here like he wants to, to try and lame. So he doesn't know that he is being walled in. 
There's a gold out here. He can't get to that. <laughs> There's a gold right here. He can't get to that. And when you do lame like that, guys, it's very difficult to balance your economy. And so Spring, as he's still trying to take this boar. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is not going to work out. This is not going to work out. But anyway, as he continues to try and do this, he'll hit Feudal Age and he'll need to build his stable. He'll need to add farm. So it'll take him quite a bit of time to get to the position where he can uh, he can find this, really. And the boar, look at this. The boar has stopped again. Spring obviously needs to brush up on his laming. And he sees his bill. He's probably thinking, what on earth? I just don't get it. There's two of them now. He's probably scratching his head. Look at his point of view. He has no clue. And, oh, oh my god. Okay, this is an important point. This is an important point. Now, I should say to you guys that I saw a clip from Spring's stream. That's all I saw. So nothing else was spoiled in this game. And there's, there's something I immediately need to point out. So remember in the beginning I said uh, Spring... Actually, I, I started recording this one time. And then I, I restarted, so I actually forget now because I'm so pumped if I mention that Spring hates getting tower rushed. Well, yeah, Spring hates getting tower rushed. And what he's known for is doing what's called a scan. So uh, when Spring's playing, what he'll do is he'll, he'll grab a palisade wall or a house or something, and he'll try and scan. So in Age of Empires 2, it's, it's kind of a dumb bug, but it's not possible to remove it. If there's a building or a unit somewhere that you have scouted, it will not allow you to build. That's kind of logical, right? So Spring plays on this big zoomed out point of view. And what you'll see him do when he has very little scouting info is he will scan. And the reason I freaked out, the reason I paused this was because I am 100% certain that Spring scanned, saw that there was something over here, assumed it was villagers, and is now building a defensive tower. So we will resume the game now. So he's building a tower here. Now, he still doesn't know exactly what's going on here. Looks like he's come back to steal the sheep from his opponent. I mean, he saw the forward vills. So logically, he could be thinking that his opponent is tower rushing him. I mean, Timotheus is still in Dark Age. Timotheus's boar is just running back now. Spring doesn't have any clue, and now he finds out. <laughs> he tried to make a few spears just so he could have some units to fight, and now he sees the walls of death. Every single gold that Spring has is walled out. This is just amazing. I mean, it's a ballsy strategy from Timotheus. He went for it, and at a high level, something like this has worked. And Spring just says godly in the chat, and godly this is. Again, gold 1 for spring, gold 2 for spring, and gold 3 for spring. They are all walled out. And, oh, uh, we downloaded... Well, I guess there's no going back now. I don't think I can do chat off. I've downloaded spring's point of view on Voobly, and so we get all of his, uh, his chat. And look, <laughs> I mean, I can't complain about this. These are my emotes being used in spring's chat. He had Twitch connected to his Voobly. So yeah, people are laughing there. Hopefully they're not too distracting. And Spring is in Feudal Age now, trying to break out. He's wasted stone on that tower. And... Timotheus is sitting pretty. He didn't even go back for his boar. Sitting pretty. He'll hit Feudal Age. He will not be able to fast castle off of this. But he can then tower rush behind this. So if he builds a tower here, if he builds a tower here, maybe a tower here, he'll even further deny those resources. And if you're spring now, you really got to be thinking about a, a plan C. I mean, plan A was lame, plan B was go scouts, plan C is, well, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Like, that's the ridiculous thing. I've never seen this at a high level, ever. This is the first time... I've seen something like this, and Spring has got to be so frustrated with himself now, because everywhere he looks, there's just walls. He is absolutely walled in. This would probably be the, the easiest place for him to get through, but that's a whole house, and Timotheus could always send a villa over there and quick wallet. 
So, Timotheus normally would feel like he's under pressure, but he doesn't, and he's gonna double down here. He's gonna go with stone walls. Oh my god, so he goes with stone walls now and spring. The only thing he has in his base here is one pile of stone. Truly not the best map for him. And uh, guess what he could do is try and sell some of that stone to get gold to advance to Castle Age, but then I don't know how he'll break through this. Just incredible. This is one of the most annoying strategies that Spring will ever encounter. But I do believe that this was so crazy that he could not help but be impressed, you know? Like, somebody just bests you, and it's it's in such a fashion that you can't... You just need to shake their hand afterwards, you know? You can't even be mad. Well, the stone walls are going up. I don't see how Spring can get out of here. And, uh... Timotheus is probably building up towards plumed archers in castle age right he's already on stone he doesn't need to worry about walls at his base because he has 80 percent of the map to himself because spring is walled in this is incredible yeah spring is on stone now and again it wouldn't surprise me to see him selling a little bit with the market because that's really the only way they can get access to gold to advance the castle age and this really sets Timotheus up beautifully because in the next stage, he ideally would be going plumes in this matchup. Not eagles, plumes. So, you know, he's taking his good old time here, building his buildings, but he's working his way towards Castle Age. And he and Spring might have similar times, believe it or not. And there will be no, no, uh, there will not be anything coming from Spring that will stop these walls. And Timotheus says, just saving time. Yeah, just saving time. And Spring says, thank you. Spring says, thank you. What a nice guy. So Spring clicks up to Castle Age at the same time. Look how brilliant this is. The same time they click up. I think the, the top left, when they end up hitting the next stage, it will only have Spring first because of the uh, alphabetical order. I just had to do the alphabet in my head. A, B, C, D, E, F. Oh my god, the villagers hopped through. Oh my god, the villagers hopped through. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. So, that's interesting. I mean, it forces a tower out of a spring. That spring really didn't want to build. Hmm. Now, come on, YouTube. I'm not the only one out there who has to sing the alphabet song in their head every time they need to figure it out. Don't judge. I can already feel the judgment, okay? So, yeah, Spring will probably need to build a castle. I think if he can build a castle here, um, or maybe here, then he could eventually get access to his gold again. As much as I think he needs to sell, and he will, I'm sure, for military... He needs to build his, his own castle when he hits Castle Age, and he's very close to having that stone. Timotheus is actually further away, but he has a lot of villagers on stone as well. Uh, he could use some gold to buy stone too. And it's not like he's, he's in a bad situation even if Spring gets his castle up first. He can just build his castle back here. So Spring will have to build his on the inside of the walls here. And then Timotheus can just place his back here, and I think that's what he's doing. He's sending more vills forward. Yeah, he sees the castles going up. And it wouldn't surprise me now to see Timotheus buy. Just buy, buy the stone. Oh, okay, he's going to place more stone walls. Okay. So he'll place a few more stone walls and then probably build a castle back here. And this is just incredible. Spring is walled in. He hasn't collected any gold this game. You're not going to see this again anytime soon. For players at this level, this is just not something that happens. So, okay, one villager goes down for Timotheus. I'm thinking he builds his castle now. He does. As Spring does not see that, so he'll finally break through. And I imagine he'll just be frustrated. And he's making a few petards. 
So there's two layers of stone wall and there's palisade. So he's going to need more than two petards. Depends on the splash, but I think normally it is two petards per piece of stone wall. But when they're up against each other like that, it can be different. Doesn't matter though. Again, he gets through. He's going to need a hell of a lot more petards to kill this castle. And the plumed archers for Timotheus are going to be so much better than the camel archers of spring. And he can't afford to do anything else because he has no gold. I'm sure you've heard me say that already. The sick leopard realizes the situation is pretty sick. So yeah, the castle goes up. Oh man, spring can't see it. He's almost through to this gold actually. He might get gold this game. But obviously, a few archers can run around from Timotheus, and this will not be an issue. So, looking at the economy, Spring's actually head in villagers. He just doesn't have access to the resources he needs. And wow, Timotheus is going for a 1 TC Imperial Age. I was wondering why he was so far behind in vills. This is intentional. And he is going to click up to the Imperial Age. Only 37 villagers. That's all he feels like he needs. Because Spring doesn't have the gold. And, you know, he has placed these walls here. This does make sense now. This does make sense. I was wondering why he was doing this, because the castle would have protected him. But since he can't make a ton of military, I get it. And Spring is running out now. And... <laughs> he sees the castles there. Kiwi says, it's T90 fine. That's one of my emotes when you use one. It's totally not fine. It's totally not fine. The spring could sell that wood, honestly. Sell some of that wood, but then how does he get through? I still don't see him getting through. And spring is definitely not expecting his opponents to be on the way to the Imperial Age right now. If he knew his opponent was going to Imp, then maybe he'd, he'd try and poach with some rams. Instead of adding so many town centers, he'd probably stay on one or two TCs. And I guess the batards are going to explode to this side. Spring is just hoping to get his vill count up. He sees the score. He's feeling pretty good about it, I'm sure. He's probably saying, well, he invested a lot of time and stone into walls. He probably doesn't have the economy I do. Well, it's true. Spring has the, the stronger economy. But that's with everything but gold. So Timotheus will have a few plumed archers. He's actually sending them around here to make sure the spring does not get to gold. Spring has not mined any gold this game. Zero. Not one. Not not half. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. And now he's probably not sure what to do. You can see he has been selling some stuff. And now his opponent hits the Imperial Age. And now he's probably thinking, well, I'm kind of screwed here. He breaks through that layer of stone wall to find another one. Even if he gets out here, he still can't get access to gold. And what will Spring have if he can't protect himself with that castle? He won't have much. He'll have a few scouts, a few petards. And so it's just trebs and plumes now. And these, are, these plumes are not all that tanky. But... The trebuchets can't be addressed. Oh, this is actually really bad. <laughs> I was going to say, Timotheus, you don't want to lose that trebuchet. There we go. Just repositioning it now. It's just brilliant. Timotheus, he, he doesn't have a lot of economy back at home, but he doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. You can tell Spring's been flustered. He forgot about this 2 HP scout from earlier. The funny thing was, is because of Spring's Aggression with the lame in the early game. That is why he will lose here. He didn't scout his own base. I mean, in his defense, do you ever expect someone to go with that strategy? No. Wow. And I apologize, YouTube, for downloading the wrong recorded game. I, I didn't want to re-record this again. The first five minutes, uh, the last time I tried it, I was unhappy with the commentary. And this time, I'm... I'm okay with it. I don't want to go back now. So you can at least see what, what people were thinking, right? 
And Willis is saying, hey, why don't you break through on the right-hand side? Well, he's just done that, actually. Now, he's going into Elite Skirm. So that would be the play here. So he might get a little bit of gold. But he can't get to the Imperial Age. And he cannot get Bracer. He's Plumed Archers. They have Bracer already. It wouldn't surprise me to see more Plumes. It wouldn't surprise me to see a second castle. As Spring's just in trouble now. He has 50 more Villagers. But he does not have access to gold. And you can see just how quickly these Plumed Archers can change things. Luckily Spring is Berber. So he has that, that bonus with the faster Villagers. So he can flee a little bit earlier. A little bit faster. But just look at this. <laughs> these villagers are trying to run. Yeah, just sac sacrifice the women here and, and let the other guys free. Well, I didn't mean guys. I meant the other people, okay? It's 2018. W women and men are able to be picked off by plumed archers. So anyway, Ballistic's on the way for spring. He feels like he could probably hold this, and it's it's true. If he can make the skirms, I mean, what do skirms cost? They cost wood, they cost food. And wow, nice little house wall there to keep the plumed archers trapped in here. It, it seems like uh, Timotheus is having an issue advancing past his castle. He's getting ballistics now as well. So great job from Spring, honestly. Uh, considering his situation, he's done a good job. He has a lot of extra villagers still. He's gone for the correct counter. And he's doing the correct thing and creating fills non-stop because that's the one thing he has is, is the extra eco. Maybe he should have practiced his force nothing and learned how to chop through trees faster because he could chop through here, but it's obviously going to take some time. And you can see now Timotheus is adding more economy. So he is going to add a few more villagers and just hold this position. He doesn't necessarily need to push here. He just needs to keep spring starved. And believe me, Spring is starving at the moment. So what you can do is you can use these trebuchets to kill all the buildings of Spring. And now Spring, he's forced to come address this. And he runs into the castle fire and he could run into the Maganel fire if he does that. So he has to be very careful. And if I know Spring, he'll try and micro here. And good micro, kill the vill, which is probably the repair vill. Good splits. This is not an easy game to play here. We're trying to micro against the Maganel, but he'll kill it. He'll kill it. And who cares about the trebuchets right now? Just use your, your skirmishers versus the plumes. And he's selling food. So he's trying to get gold. He really just needs the Imperial Age so he can get Bracer. And finally he is on gold. Though he sent too many villagers there. They're going to have to lay off some workers. If he goes for battering rams, this could work. Two battering rams could actually kill some trebs here. Or at the very least, force Timotheus to back up with his units. But that Maganel, that makes all the difference. You can see the skirmishers dying to the Maganel now, and the rams will also die in spring. As suddenly, just plummeting in population, you can see the KD for Timotheus. He's taken so many good trades despite the counter to his units being here. Plumed archers are fairly good against skirmishers compared to other archers. They're very mobile. And again, he has Bracer, and Spring is running out of ideas here. Really running out of ideas. He tried, but he couldn't kill the trebuchets. His rams were just a waste in the end. And these skirmishers, they're going to die to the plumes now. When Spring had more skirms, it was worth it. But now the plumed archers are going to be really strong. And it wouldn't surprise me to see Timotheus build a forward castle again. He has the stone for it. Remember, his economy is pretty good back at home. So he has that. And oh my god, he's going to build it here. He's going to build it on this gold. He sees that Spring is here. And there's no way that Spring can stop that castle from going up. And what a sweet, sweet way to end it. With another castle on another gold right beyond his walls. I don't think he would have even needed a second castle. He could... He could put the castle on 2 HP and let Spring kill it with the Skirmisher and he'd still be fine because of the amount of control he has. Just excellent scouting. It's hard for me to say how much of it was luck. It was probably a fair amount of luck as well to wall out all of these golds, but yeah, the castle's going up and Spring, of course, can't see it. 
And it would not surprise me, guys, to see Spring call the game, despite being up 50 population, after the castle's completed. Four Mackinels now. As Spring will have a small hill advantage, but these are still skirmishers versus Mackinels. Not looking good here. He's trying his best to take good trades. And the castle will soon go up. And what an annoying strategy. And what a sick strategy from Timotheus. It's not easy to wall your opponent in. There's a reason we rarely see this at the high level. And he pulled it off. And, and some fantastic revenge for him as well, I imagine. Because he was getting lamed. Spring, he killed a villager. He stole some sheep. He borrowed the boar. As Spring calls the GG, and that is the end of an amazing strategy from our yellow player. That was sick. I, I just can't get over that. Spring was completely walled in. I'm trying to rack my brain now. We're closing in on 800 videos on YouTube. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before. And I, I didn't even see that in a noob game. Now, we've casted some lower level games. I haven't seen it in a community game. I I just haven't seen it before. And to see it between two players who are arguably the two best in the United States, now that's something. That is something. Uh, what a play, man. What a play. What revenge from Timotheus. A spring can probably only uh, give out a round of applause himself, despite how annoyed he is. But... What a game. We're going to look at the achievements now. I just want to see the economy. That's what I want to see. See, spring, Spring's gold collected is from selling that food and wood. Okay? So, Timotheus, he had a lot less food and wood. He had more stone. He had more gold. And obviously, he would have had more and more long term if the game would have continued. That is just an excellent strategy from Timotheus. There's the KD. Look at that. 99 kills. That is a 10 to 1 KD, pretty much. Insanity. Look at the technology stats. I don't think this is all that important. It's just a sick strategy. There's nothing more I can say about it. That was incredible from Timotheus. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, like the vid, share the vid. You, oh my. <laughs> I pressed the button on my keyboard. Sorry. Uh, I scared myself. But yeah, you guys know the drill by now. Really hope you enjoyed. I stream on Twitch.tv five days a week, so there's community games on Thursdays. Normally, I stream Wednesday through Sundays, so if you're looking to see some live Age of Empires 2, whether that be expert or casual games, I'm always there as well, and that link is in the video description. Also, you can check out my Twitter, my Facebook, whatever social medias you use. If you want to stay involved, you can check it out there. I will see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.